to the beginning. How did you discover your passion for the arts? Oh man, you know, I think I was drawn to it when I was really, really young. Um, when I, I mean, I think before the age of 10, I always kind of played make-believe in my room. <laughs> I just love storytelling. I love drawing. I loved all of that stuff. Um, but I was incredibly introverted, very, very shy child. And so I really kept it to myself for a really long time. Um, but then, you know, you get older, you get a little bit bolder. And then eventually it just came to kind of like a precipice where I was like, all right, I'm either going to do this or I'm not. And I don't know what exactly it was that kind of triggered it, but I just said, I really have to go for this because it's just something that I've been dying to do always in the peripheral in the back of my mind. Um, and I'm, I'm just really grateful that I, I gave it a shot. Yeah, you were you're pursuing a career in finance before you made the decision to pursue a career as an actor. How challenging was that decision? Oh, you know, it, it was and it wasn't because I think the moment that I decided to quit my job in finance and, and pursue this. Um, it, it, I think the benefit of me starting later in life was really helpful because one, I knew that I could do something else, but I chose to do this. I could have arguably an easier time of it staying in finance, but I really chose to do this. So I think for me personally, knowing that I could do have a different path in life, but still really, really wanted to go for this. It, it made the decision a lot easier. Um, didn't make the journey easier, but it made the decision to do this every single day a lot easier. Um, so I think that's kind of my path of it and, and how it worked out for me. And speaking of your journey, when you look at your career as a whole, who or what's had the biggest influence on you, either personally or professionally? Ooh, that's a really good question. Um, you know, I would say that having looked back on it and actually, thankfully, because of these interviews, because it makes you kind of think about, yeah. you know, all of these influences in your life. So my grandmother, uh, she still is in her 90s. She's still a classical opera, opera singer. Um, so she was somebody very close to me who worked well in the arts, who had success at it. And so I grew up seeing her perform and seeing her be pretty fearless with all of this, um, you know, in the face of whatever adversary that she had to had to deal with. Um, so when I didn't even realize it at the time, having that example in front of me, I think has really been helpful knowing that it can be done um, and that you could ha do this and pursue this as a living. In addition to, to acting, you're also a producer, writer, and director. How has your work behind the scenes made you a stronger actress and vice versa? I mean, I, I still have a long way to go for all of those avenues, definitely. Like, I, I feel like I've barely scratched the surface for acting. So um, I think at the forefront, my, my focus has always been the acting. However, knowing that, I always, I always have the mentality that the more you know about the industry and in general, the, the players that are in the realm of where you're working, you will make better decisions no matter what position you're in. And for me as a producer, um, it's a really hard job. And so I understand like what it meant to kind of uh, project, like manage a project on a bigger scale from the cradle to the grave, so to speak, um, in, in film. Because as an actor, you're kind of one of, not the last detail, I should say, but like one of the, you're, you're kind of coming in in the middle of it, right? Where maybe the inception of an idea has started years, years before. And so if you're kind of where at the beginning of that, well, you have a very different point of view of the, the creative side of that project. And that to me was incredibly helpful, especially sitting behind the camera um, in the casting process was really helpful as an actor because you start to realize, you know, it has a, a, the rejection is huge in this industry. It really has nothing to do with you yeah. at the end of the day. It's about an essence when you're looking at people and you're casting them. It's about this like intangible quality and you could go into an audition room and you can absolutely kill it and, and be great, but you're just not that role. And that really helped me in, in the mental um, mindset as, as an actor going into auditions particularly because you're auditioning more than you're working. And that level, of, right? That level of fear really can play with your mind. But if have, that was one of the biggest things for me, especially at the beginning, was being able to sit behind that and seeing that 
and it gave me a lot more confidence going into the room and auditioning. Um, and with directing, it's like, if you can understand that, then you, I feel like I have so much more uh, creative input that could be a value to the set that makes me a better collaborator. So I still have a long way to go and I'm like so yearning just to learn all of it. Um, I find it incredibly exciting, but yeah, I'm still such a novice when it comes to all that stuff. <laughs> You've had a lot of success already in your young career. When you look back, is there a moment that stands out to you? Um, you know, for me, I think the the classic ice like uh, iceberg model, right? You know, I think for me, when I booked my first uh, series regular role with Street Legal at CBC, that was a huge moment for me, only because. I had come so close so many times before that, but nobody sees that. And it's just kind of like, it was such a nice big payoff for me personally to be like, oh my God, I finally get to do the thing as opposed to like auditioning like crazy and like being so, so close. Um, so that for me was that moment of like, really like just satisfaction and be like, oh my God, I actually get to act. <laughs> I actually get to do this thing. Um, as opposed to like, just telling the, the audition stories all, all the time, you know what I mean? Yeah, you know, during those more challenging times, how were you able to continue to persevere? Kind of going back to what I said, I like I liked what I did before in finance. I actually really enjoyed my job, um, but I love this. I absolutely love it. And knowing that I can do something else really gives me the determination to be like, but I love this. And this is what I really, really want to get good at and what I what I feel really provides. It just provides something different for me that finance never could. Um, and having known that, I just make the decision every single day, like you love this though. So everything else that kind of comes with it and you're going to get, no matter what you work in, truly, you are going to get rejection. You are going to get hard times. So you better, you better enjoy what you do. And I really enjoy what I do. Yeah, speaking of enjoying what you do, you're one of the stars of Kung Fu and this series has been incredibly well received. What do you think is resonating most with audiences? You know, what I love about our show is that there's this like multi-generational um, dynamic in the show where you have the family, you have different kinds of families, and then you have the different age and generations. So I think everybody is really satisfied to see that because I think that's really important too, so that you can see those dynamics between those people, because for me personally, like especially with the Shen family, I look at that and I see the level of detail and care that the showrunners and the creatives have put into really fairly and equitably showing that representation of the Asian family. Um, it really speaks to me. It speaks to my family. I mean, we have giggles about it being like, oh, my, my mom does that. <laughs> my dad does that. You know what I mean? And I think having that relatability and seeing yourself on screen um, really just is so special to bridge gaps of miscommunication and just, just to have that shared moment. Like you don't even need to be an Asian American, Asian Canadian to enjoy and understand this show. It, go, it transcends beyond that. It's, it's like you could see yourself and everybody, no matter what your background is, can relate to it. And I think that's what's really special about it. Yeah, and you know, you've said in previous interviews that, you know, growing up, you didn't see yourself represented in mainstream media. What has it really meant to you to know that shows like Kung Fu for current and future generations, people won't have to experience that? Oh, man, it, it means a lot because I, when I think back on it, I think I related, I always related to the heroes or, you know, that's what it's meant to do, but never someone who looks like me. And look, I think media has does have this incredible power to help formulate our ideas about people, our understanding about people. And so having a show like Kung Fu and hopefully many more to come would help to reverse any perhaps adverse impacts or influences that people might have when it comes to like racial and gender and, and biases that we sometimes do see in television. And to know that we are working towards mitigating that, while we're not the solution, we are part of it, is really, really special. It's a powerful tool um, for people to shape their perceptions of the world. Yeah, great answer. You know, when describing your, your character, you've often said she's the hero in her own story. How did that outlook shape the way that you approached her? 
Yeah, I mean, it's really like, I can't play anybody that I don't like and I love her, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so what, but what I loved about uh, that approach is that, I mean, she's very morally, you know, ambiguous, so to speak, but it's really challenging and really fun to be able to see the world through that lens, mm -hmm. something so far removed from my own. And it kind of opens up another way of understanding people in general um, because she has her reasons and while her reasons are actually, uh, you know, somewhat arguably meaningful, it's the ways that she goes about to get what she wants, not so much. Um, so it's really, it's really interesting for me as an actor to try to wrap my head around that because it's not like people like her don't exist, right? Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah. You know, we're, we're halfway through season one. What's ahead for your character? What can you tease? Ooh, what can I tease? <gasps> okay, I have to think about this. So there's no spoiler. <laughs> um, okay, well, you'll see a lot more fighting. You'll get to, which is like, for me, they've been great so far. They just get better and better. So I'm really excited for uh, the audiences to see the fight sequences coming up. Um, you'll see her develop different kinds of relationships. So you'll see a completely different side of Jalan coming up. Um, Oh, man, what else can I tease that's not? I think that's it. I think I'll just have to stay tuned and watch. I hopefully that, that's enough to entice people to keep coming along with us for the ride. Uh, and then we just like to end all of our interviews with a pop culture speed round. Do you have a, a guilty pleasure TV show? Oh, guilty pleasure? The uh, Family Guy. <laughs> what about a guilty pleasure movie? Oh, Step Brothers. Oh, so good. So uh, good. <laughs> they're not a favorite book. Oh, favorite book. Um, the Red Rising series. Favorite play or musical? Uh, play? Lion King. Uh, what about a band or artist that fans would be surprised to learn is on your playlist? Surprised? Um... I don't know if it's surprising. I have a lot of Childish Gambino on my playlist. I don't think that's surprising though. I have a lot of like hit 80 songs, like well before mm. my time. I just resonate with them. A lot of Queen, like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. Uh, what's your dream role? Aside from this, um, <laughs> mm. I look, I just love playing anything that like Jalan was so different for me, which is fantastic. Yeah. And I love stepping into different kinds of skin, as weird as that sounds. It's just like, it's just more fun for me. Sometimes the more I'm removed from it. Um, having said that though, I, I would also love to play something that's really close to me that I haven't played yet. So it'd be interesting to see if there's a character I'm like, wow, she's exactly like me. <laughs> I haven't had that yet. Yeah. Uh, and then final question for you, who would play you in the story of your life? Oh, like in a biopic. Uh, <laughs> so I had, I had this, uh, this question and it was, it was uh, given to a casting of mine in the last show. I know, sorry, this is a fire rapid thing. No. She told me, she's like, I think a Muppet would be really good for you. <laughs> Because I have this, like, apparently I have this, like, Muppet energy, you know, like when Sesame Street and they're, like, kind of, like, going around and, like, getting lost in the city. I have zero sense of direction and I could totally see that. So it'll be a different kind of biopic, but sure, let's <laughs> throw that out there. <laughs> That's the best answer I've heard to that question. <laughs>